Hello and welcome back to me playing Dark Souls. Last time we explained a bit this area around here, as uh, which is the Sunlight Altar. We ex we were talking about this statue. More specifically, we were talking about this statue over here. We were discussing the Drake. We were discussing a bit about the game dynamics and how much I suck. This time around, you lost some footage because I'm an idiot. Uh, essentially, what happened is I started recording. I started killing things here. And uh, I press the start key. Start key plus fraps equals game crash, and uh, that means uh, game footage loss. What did you miss is essentially me trying to aggro these guys and locking the gate and killing the boar. I'm horrible. I, I feel bad, but there is no way I can return that boar back. So I'll have to just kill these guys without the boar, which is unfortunate. But let's just say what I did is used a Loring Skull from the top of the bridge to get him closer. And once he was close, I plunged him into melee mode, or rather into plunge. I plunged him down and killed him. It's really that easy. An alternative to this area for those that are having a hard time is to just sprint through it, sprint up the stairs. I'm gonna show you right now. If you sprint through it up the stairs, you hold the shield here, and if you go straight through that gate, you can manage to actually sneak past before it closes down. So there is that. Now this part is a tiny little bit trickier because of uh, the quantity of enemies, but you can always just move behind them and stab one of these guys. We're gonna wait for this guy to... oh! dodge my attack apparently, but it's not a problem, I can always uh, use my strong attack, uh, the Claymore strong attack being very very effective in most cases because of its super long reach, it has a huge reach. And once we take care of this guy, we shouldn't have any more issues with this area, and we can proceed onwards. Keep it in mind that I wouldn't have used the shortcut simply because I have to go all, all the way down there, because I don't have a master key, and that means that I need the mystery key which will be getting on there. Anyway, <clears throat> I apologize for my voice, or lack it or off. Uh, let's just say that uh, I am strong into a aller an allergy. So, yeah. So right now, I'm trying to aggro these guys, knowing where their position is. Basically, they're one on each side. And this guy starts running, the one in the hallway starts running towards the stairs and goes upwards so that he can actually lead you into a uh, ambush. Whoa, I knew that guy was coming, by the way. I just didn't react in time. There should be one more here, we can spin and kill him. The running attack is really good with this weapon, it's really good. Mr. Ricky, oh, let's read this out, shall we? Uh, there we go. Uh, the purpose of this key is unknown, it appears to be a basic prison cell key. That's all we know. That's all we've got in information. Up the ladder, there is two hollows, two simple hollows, which we can... Oh! My lack of poise makes it so that I cannot really attack them if they attack me sooner, and my sword is rather slow in that. Now, I strongly suggest new players to tr practice this, uh, this stepping technique up here, because you might need this later on. Much later on. We're, we're gonna discuss it later. But yeah, this is actually useful for practicing. It's not a big deal of a reward, but you know, it's always useful to try it out. And through this white fog, we reach to the next section of the zone, the next section of the Undead Parish, if I might add. And down here, there is a Boulder Knight. Boulder Knights are essentially pains in the butt, especially these guys. These are the rapier Boulder Knights. I want to go as close as possible. Okay, I tried to stab him there, but obviously failed. No! You're not as to sing up in my watch. Not on my watch. So the ra rapier guys are actually painful, simply because they tend to repost you. They they, they get into a pose, po pose where uh, they... Uh, oh, that was long range uh, spearing, bro. Let's retry this out now. I guess not. I guess I'm just gonna murder you. That works for me. <clears throat> We're gonna ask this up. So basically they go in a pose where they put their rap rapier uh, far ahead of you. And if you attack them at that point, and if you don't have like a long reach weapon, 
they're gonna repost your butt and they're gonna murder you now down here I know that there is an ambush waiting for us two people apparently I queued only that guy but there is a boulder knight with a boulder side sword those are easier to handle they have less health they have less resistance to physical damage and he just doesn't want to hear about coming over here So I guess we're gonna kill his partner, and then, when he's alone, repose his ass. They're rather easy uh, to predict, actually. That that is sprinting attack with, where they uh, uh, try to pierce or trust you. That that's really easy to uh, predict. It's not a hard to repose. It's not that hard to repose them. Now we're through the other side. We can open this gate. Interesting to notice, there is actually a hole through this wall. Big O cannonball must have passed by here, huh? Wait, we're gonna see it better, but I don't wanna aggro anyone in the church. And there is three boulder knights, amongst other, such as a bear nick knight down the uh, down the road, which we're gonna discuss all in uh, due time. In general, all of these side sword guys, the side sword guys are the ones with the big shield, by the way. Which is actually a really good shield. Um, they're easy to predict. Now, we got a, another key, which we can check right about now. Basement key opens the, the narrow passage leading below at the far face of the Great Bridge in the Undead Burg. For those that don't know where to go after the parish, it's nicely written up here. You just have to read the description, guys. That is all. We get a halberd here. I don't think I have the stats to use. I do have the stats to use it. Halberd is a really good weapon. It's really, really good. It has the same weight as the claymore. The downside is, basically, if you do not hit, you're gonna stumble, as you can see. But it has a really good moveset. There has a spin attack. As you can see, every attack that I miss stumbles. It has this uh, thrusting attack, and what else do we have? We have uh, the backstep attack, which is an overhead attack. One-handed should be pretty much the same. We have the sprinting two-handed attack, which is again an overhead. One-handed oh, one -handed sprinting attack is the same, and then we have the rolling attack, which is basically a spin, a uh, slash, I suppose. And the two-handed uh, roll is the same. So basically, one-handed or two-handed, this weapon has basically the same patterns. Now through here, there is a rapier guy, which I'm gonna probably miss to repost. Ah, there we go. This is the repost po pose. Don't attack him when he does this. Kick him. Do not attack him. It's one of the better ways to solve it. Oh. Also, try not to risk too much in reposting these guys. They can chain the, the heck out of you. They're really strong. So yeah, rapier guys are risky guys. These guys are easier. Now watch me die at this. Okay, I failed there, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, he's slow. I have all the time to ask this in the world. Oh! Okay. He got fast in the wrongest of times. So as long as you hit, this halberd is really powerful. There isn't much else to be said here. We're not gonna go through there because there is actually an ambush if we go through the main entrance of the church. Instead we're gonna go here and we're gonna go into a minor bigger battle against three hollows, one crossbowman and two swordsmen. This can be a pain in the dick, but what you can do is always move to the side of this church, which covers you from that guy, and uh, the second swordsman is not gonna engage you. If you just stick around to this wall, he's not gonna aggro. Once you go closer though, he is going to aggro and then you can just take care of him easily. Really, really easily. Okay, now let's take care of this crossbowman. The way you can do it is by just sprinting and BAM! Dead. That easy. Now, for me to not screw up things, I'm gonna go here, and there is two things very important in this place. This is the parish main bonfire, main and only bonfire, if I might add. The Sunlight Altar is not a parish bonfire. 
And as you can hear, there is a smith, a blacksmith, which he's going to upgrade our weapon. We're gonna use it, use him to upgrade the claymore and maybe also the halberd. So we're gonna rest at this bonfire. Sadly, only triggering the bonfire doesn't mean necessarily that you've rested at it, so you want to make sure that you rested it. And we can change back into our claymore here, and we're gonna talk to Andre. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of Astora. If you require smithing, then speak to me. Alright. Okay, so we're gonna learn gesture, which is hurrah. Really nice. If you go in PvP and you beat someone miraculously, you just go like, hooray! Or you can just go like, well, what is it? But we're gonna discuss that later. Let's talk to this guy. Most weapons and armor are mighty sturdy indeed. But every hunk of metal has its breaking point. If you notice durability running low, it's time to repair. You can ask a blacksmith like myself, or do it on your own with a grindstone. The nice thing about weapons, they never betray you. So pay them a little respect, they... This guy is bad ass. Um, other than the fact that he has a freaking huge beard, and he seems to have some signs of hollowing, or rather, he probably has dark sign, as you can see, he has those uh, scars on his chest. He also is the only NPC, humanoid NPC in the game that is going to have minimal lip sync. Believe it or not, that's true. Alright, we're gonna purchase some items. Titanite shards. Titanite shard for weapon reinforcement, most common titanite material reinforces standard weapons to plus five, so this is the item that we need. We can buy up to three of them, I'm gonna buy two because that is what we really need right now. And I'm thinking, let me see what items he has, Not nothing in particular. Later on we're gonna buy the weapon smith box and the repair box, the armor smith box is not that necessary. I actually strongly suggest not purchasing it because sometimes you can be confused and go into the armor uh, upgrade menu and uh, consume something very precious in your material compartment in an armor instead of uh, your weapon of choice. It happened to me. Instead of uh, also repairing it, more specifically that. Uh, let's talk again. There are two types of weapon forging. There's reinforcement and there's ascension. Reinforcement is simple. It strengthens the weapon and nothing more. A simple task for any blacksmith. Hell, you could even do it yourself with a smith box. But ascension's a finer art. It alters a weapon's properties. Ascension is the territory of we blacksmiths. A smith box just won't do the trick. Start out with reinforcement. When that loses its charm, you can consider ascension. As you've noticed, this land is flush with the mad and wicked. You won't make it through the night without employing my services. <laughs> He's really a cool guy, by the way. Right, we're gonna reinforce weapon right now, because he's the only way to do it right now. There is another way, but we're not gonna go to that guy yet. And we're gonna reinforce our claimer to plus two, so that adds uh, like 20 damage to it, and gives us more uh, parameter bonuses through strength and dexterity. So as you can see, now we do 123 plus 25 damage, which is quite a bunch. But, but we're gonna actually reinforce it, reinforce it a tiny little bit more before the boss fight. First and foremost, I'm gonna rest again at the bonfire just to make sure that I've rested at it. And we shall go on and clear out the parish. 
There are some enemies that we have to face, as I said, there is a Baronic Knight, which we're gonna discuss thoroughly. Uh, he is one of the harder to kill enemies this early part of the game, and he's borderline necessary to kill. You can actually skip him by running like an idiot, but there is no bonus to it. He gets he gives you a Titanite chart 100%. Oh, he stepped there. He tried to dodge my stab, but he failed spectacularly at it. So, one thing that I want to do, or try to do, is now repose and two-hand the weapon. Oh! It's just automatic. I, I automatically press L1 the moment I have a successful repose, and I apologize for that. Now, the Baronic Knight is a big man. You cannot repose him, you cannot backstab him. You can parry him, though. So you want to aggro him? He shakes the whole screen. His attacks are so strong. Ow. I tried to repose him there, or rather parry him there. But you want to keep yourself at full health if possible. I'm try I'll try to uh, give a, par a successful parry to show you that it is indeed possible. There we go. But, as I said, you cannot repost him. Still, you can get some time there to get some uh, attacks, maybe a counter too. Uh, that was a... oops. That was a successful parry, but it was a bit delayed, so I got also hurt. That wasn't a successful, that was a half parry. As in, uh, I go through the uh, stagger animation, but I lose health and he doesn't get staggered. So what you can do is essentially trick him into swinging, at low health he's actually gonna back up and try to Estus without success, so try to keep close distance if he's not attacking. And he gives you a Titanite charge, so that's quite precious, but most importantly, here lies a body of a lady with a firekeeper soul. And well, you look at that, another statue of the same woman holding the same baby with a sword. With birds. And there seems to be like chimera-like creatures on both sides. We're gonna discuss it more thoroughly, but first I wanna take care of that guy up there. So first and foremost, let's discuss the Firekeeper Soul. Soul of a long lost Firekeeper. Each Firekeeper is a corporeal manifestation of her bonfire and a draw for the humanity which is offered to her. Her soul is gnawed by infinite humanity and can boost the power of precious Estes Flask. It can be used to gain humanity and restore hit points at the cost of losing the Firekeeper's soul to reinforce the Estes Flask. We can reinforce our Estes Flask into healing it more by bringing it to another Firekeeper. What this means, though, is that there was a Firekeeper in this parish. Interesting concept. There must have been another f Firekeeper in here. No. I thought that... Oh, there we go. This r this guy is a Rapier Boulder Knight. I want to uh, bring him to the open area. Usually it's actually suggested that you fight him in on the stairs, simply because if he has high ground, he won't be able to hit you. Basically, if you fight him here and he attacks you from up above, he will not hit you, whereas you can hit his legs quite easily, and he cannot repost you here. You're completely safe from repost there. Sometimes he can parry you, but he can definitely not repost you. Now we're gonna aggro lots of these undead hollows here, and luckily enough, our strong attack, our R2 or RT... Oh god, you don't wanna get hit when they have this blue aura with, uh, with them. Essentially what happens is uh, that mage that is casting spells like Crazy Donger, he uh, enhances them to do more damage, like 50% more damage, it's kind of ridiculous. Oh god. So as you can see they can actually chain kill you quite easily, so you wanna take care of them in the least troublesome way possible. Usually I do not retreat that long, but I wanna be sh completely sure that I kill that mage. Also, this uh, enhancement lasts quite a long while, so you might consider waiting for it to run out, but he might cast it again. What is important is that none of the Boulder Knights gets this enhancement, because if they do, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. There is actually a situation that we're gonna see in the future where such an enhancement can enhance a whole boss, and he instantly kills you, he destroys you if he hits you. Luckily enough, that, that boss is rather easy to dodge. 
And we get several broken straight swords thanks to our one humanity. I'm gonna drink again and uh, the guy seems to have dropped down, didn't he? Yeah, he dropped down together with the Boulder Knights, so be careful of that. But it's neither here nor there, we can now safely travel across here, I reckon, and the Boulder Rapier guy here is not gonna be buffed. Now let me try and show you what I mean by attacking at stairs. Okay, that was... Okay, that's obviously not the stairs anymore. Well, I'm trying to do this safely. But I'm failing. Oh, will you just die? Thank you. I tried to stab him there like six times in a row, but apparently when I'm recording, stabs are not a thing. Alright, we're gonna destroy this. Clearly you can see light. And up here, interestingly enough, in a church of all things, there are cells. And in it... And we use the mystery key. Interesting. Thank you. Yes. Sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Kalim. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. How kind of you. You will not get a reward right now. It's impossible to get a reward from him right now, so... Just go on your merry business. Alright. Uh, we're gonna destroy this barrel because the corpse here contains a humanity and after we killed that uh, channeler, as it's appropriate to call them, we're gonna actually discuss this area a tiny little bit and fight the boss. Probably reinforce our weapon first, further, into plus three or four, and then fight the boss. Possibly with summons. Yeah, I think I'll, I'm gonna summon just for the sake of, you know, going into human form. Hopefully I'm not gonna get invaded, but... Oh! Here's our channeler, buddy. He's so kind to actually uh, reach us here. So you want to actually try and convince him to attack you. As you can see, staying in low ground. Oh. You asshole. Magic is forbidden in this holy chambers. They actually have like 250 health. They're rather easy to take care of. And with this, I think we've killed most enemies, aside from those three baller knights there, but they shouldn't aggro so easily. So let's discuss this place. Lodric of Karim is imprisoned in a church. In the same church, there is a corpse of a firekeeper with her soul. In the same church, there is a statue of a lady holding a baby with a sword. Sword meaning possibly justice. And the lady is surrounded with uh, two ornamental pedestals with birds. Now, if you're into the lore bits of the game, you might realize that the, the one that punishes, the god that punishes, is Velka. Velka, I feel like, is that lady over there. And she's holding her son, that is not the firstborn. The firstborn is probably... A child from the, a child from uh, Gwyn and Fina, the goddess of beauty. Fina is, by the way, worshipped by Lothrek. This is the son of Velka. Gwyndolin. I'm calling it. This is Gwyndolin. That baby is Gwyndolin. And the reason why I believe this is because, according to the lore, Gwyndolin he has affinity to the moon, whereas the firstborn and Guinevere, the secondborn lady, uh, have affinity towards the sun. So, uh, towards their father's element, I suppose. He is the sun god, I suppose. So what I think is, uh, Gwyn is a good old Zeus who betrayed uh, his wife in all ways possible. Cheated on her. With Velka. And this is a Church of Velka. This is my thought. We are actually gonna discuss it further later, but first we're gonna actually go... Um, uh, what we could do is... Yeah, I know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna actually go here. 
there is actually a huge shortcut, which if you don't trigger right now, you're actually gonna be very sorry for not to do. It's safe. Take this lift. There is actually no way to know if this is safe or not, but if you have some geographical sense in you, you'll notice that we're going straight for Firelink Shrine. Someone rang a bell there. If you heard it or not, I don't know. I heard it, barely, faintly. Basically, any player in your same uh, area, or rather, in your same uh, connection zone, I suppose, every time you reload, that rings a bell will be heard by other players. So, when we ring a bell, everyone else which plays, is playing with us in that area will hear it too. So that's actually a really nice sound. Down and Firelink, we can actually rest, but we're not gonna. We're gonna find Lotric right over here. Watching at the Firekeeper. Huh. Let's talk to him. Ah, hello there. I have your reward. Please, accept it. Can we get a sunlight medal? I am grateful <coughs> to you for freeing me. <laughs> totally not, not, not eerie. enough for you. Well, let's not be greedy now. <laughs> Yeah, totally not an evil man. So here is our bonfire, the Firelink bon uh, Bonfire Keeper. She cannot speak. She, it appears that her tongue has been cut out, really. Let's reinforce the Estus Flask, and we're gonna get an Estus plus one. Now I know what you might f be thinking if if you're not new to the game. You know what Lautrec is gonna do sooner or later. I'm not gonna trigger. I, I'm gonna trigger that. I'm gonna trigger and wait. Let's talk now to uh, Crestfallen. Your weapons? That's what I just did. You'd better find a smith box soon. Of course. Unless you enjoy swinging about with blunt instruments. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I don't really want to see that message. How did that silly sorcerer's apprentice end up? You know, the one always prattling on about Master Logan. He left for the undead burg, but never came back. Serves him right. If even old Big Hat can't make it out there, what chance does he have? I hope he enjoys his new life as a hollow. Alright. More to speak about? Mm -hmm. What? You want to hear more? Yeah. Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. We just fixed it. Have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead burn through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead burn, within the plague infested blight town. But I die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> so you can see that actually he managed to reach blight town, which is that big old place down there. See that there, there, that's Blight Town. <clears throat> okay, so he spoke to us about the uh, the Bells of Awakening. We actually managed to reach very close to the entrance of the other one. What we're gonna do now is use this homeward bone to go quickly to the uh, parish bonfire. There we go. And we're gonna upgrade our weapon further. We already got a Titanite shard. We can buy three more. For the cost of 2,400, yes. Well, hello again. You seem to be doing all right. Need anything forged? I do. We're gonna buy three more Titanite shards. We're gonna have four total. And with the, these 896 souls, we'll be able to reinforce our claimer just enough. There we go. And so now we have a plus four. With another three Titanite shards, we can upgrade it to plus five, but it's. Uh, 12 bonus damage, it's not that b big of a deal right now. Don't get yourself killed. Oops. I cut his dialogue there, but it doesn't really matter. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna actually turn into human form, and I will uh, traverse through the uh, place, and uh, make sure to reach the boss fog gate. And I'll make the cut here. So we're gonna reverse following, and we're gonna assume our human appearance. There we go. We're now a beautiful, bald man. 
with lots of chest hair. Be right back, guys. Be right back. And I'm back. Now, we've reached cl very closely by to the fog gate. We can summon both Knight Lotrek over here. And also, up here, should be the sign of Solera of Astora. Uh, we have to wait for Lotrek to be summoned. There is actually also summon signs of players, but we're not gonna use those. We're gonna summon Solaire, and we can enter the boss fog gate right now. The boss is not gonna be triggered right away. <clears throat> because I entered sooner, I believe, every summon that you use, by the way, reinforces the boss by about 20%. Uh, if you enter the fog gate before the summon is complete, you're actually going to uh, have uh, the boss not get that bonus. Anyway, if we approach down this road with Lotrek and Solaire... By the way, Solaire, he's a sunlight... Uh, uh, what you call it? Warrior of sunlight. You can see he's golden. Lotrek seems golden, but he's not. He's actually a white phantom, a normal white phantom. His armor is golden, though, in color. This is the Bell Gargoyle, or Bell, Bell Fry Gargoyle, if you want. He is possibly one of the trickiest newcomers boss, for one reason. Because you're alone, and after a certain point, a second one comes in. However, if you go into human form like I did, this boss is easy. You can stagger the bejesus out of him, and once one is down, the other is not really a problem. So yeah, basically I'm cheesing him- oh! Oh god, almost fell off there. <laughs> uh, easy boss fight. You can actually cut the tail of the first one, but it's not really necessary. Now, there is actually a very easy way to do it alone. One would be to have a fast weapon, fast attacking weapon, and use the gold pine resin. You're just gonna cancel them out of existence. Really easy to do. The second way is to actually kill slowly the first one, and once the second one comes, the second one is actually going to start breathing fire as the start. The first one will start breathing fire below 50% health. In that, when they actually breathe fire, they're very slow, they're, 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 they're very uh, easy to patternize, like you can see their movements and all that, they're not very dangerous. So if you have safety distance, you can attack one while the other is shooting fire. There you're safe. You just have to be patient. It's easy to kill them both alone. Trust me. I just decided to make summons because... have summons because... It's part of the game, it's interesting, and I also got a Sunlight Medal because I've gotten with Solaire. So now we have two of them. Sunlight Medal's useful for the Sunlight... Warrior of Sunlight Covenant. You get more... Uh, miracles, but that's neither here nor there. I don't think we're gonna enter that Covenant anytime soon anyway. And up here is finally our first Bell of Awakening. Beautiful zone, by the way, this is fantastically looking. You can see actually the Hellkite Dragon, or rather Hellkite Drake Bridge down there. The whole parish is down here. The That is probably the tree of uh, up, up above uh, Firelink, and that up there is Sans Fortress. With of course Anor Londo just there, and the Duke's Archives up there. So, quite a panorama. If there is one thing I like about this game, is how everything in the world is very compact. I really love it. Now, descending back down here will cause an NPC, after you rung the first bell, will cause an NPC to be to appear. Hello. Greetings. I am Oswald of Kareem, the Park. No dearest to life, yet magnanimous of the gods. 
Come this out some says. Or to accuse. Or in need all sins might. So he is a partner. And his domain is sin. And the goddess of sin is Velka. And he is a partner in a church with a prison. In a prison because someone was imprisoned for a sin. And in the same church someone was slaughtered. A firekeeper. Whom by? Huh? They, they make it rather obvious, really. This church is pretty... I'm pretty goddamn convinced. It's, of course, subjective, but... It's pretty god. I'm pretty goddamn convinced this is a church of Velka, and that, I've I've just given you all the reasons why. Let's learn the gesture, the best gesture, be, best gesture in the game. Like every single boss defeat, you should use this gesture. If you don't, then you're bad. And we can actually purchase a few items: purging stone reduces curse buildup and breaks curse. Curse is actually a thing that halves your health, so it's quite useful but expensive. Indictment reports trespasser of invader. Trespass of invader, so if, essentially if there is an invader and kills you, you can use an indictment to um, get their crime rate up, and then they're getting haunted by the the, the, the worshippers of justice, if you want to call it that, Windlin. Homeward Bones, which return us to the last bonfire rested at, and Book of the Guilty to check uh, the list of indicted players. You can see the hackers really well here with uh, the PC version. Karmic Justice is a really, really, really good miracle for PvP. You get a shield that doesn't block 100% damage, and if you, in, uh, like, I believe, 4 seconds get hit a lot, it's gonna go kaboom-boom, and it's gonna do a lot of damage. It's insane. It's really strong against PvP. If you have 20 faith to use it, you might want to consider this if you're afraid of PvP. Velka's Talisman is a talisman for faith that scales with intelligence, so if you want to do a combination, here's your talisman. Finally, Blood Bite Ring, which uh, boosts bleeding resistance, Poison Bite Ring, which boosts poison resistance, and Ring of Sacrifice, we have, which we have already won. We can request Absolution and Abandon Covenants legally here, but that's more. I love that laughter. That guy, Oswald of Karim, possibly the badassest NPC in the game. Not the one that I like the most, of course, I like Slayer and Zygmire more, but you know, we're actually gonna change this into, well, what is it? Well, what is it? If you don't know what the heck it, this is all about, just, just go on YouTube and uh, type down, he's back. You're gonna get a video from only Afro and you can then understand what this is all about. We can actually roll our way here. You get a bit of damage from the second roll, but I don't really give a care. You don't want to roll down here unless those three boulder knights are dead. You're gonna aggro them, so rather use the stairs. Be a civilized person in a church. Use those stairs! <clears throat> and that's it. That's really it. Uh, I think I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna buy a couple of titanite shards. I'm gonna upgrade my sword and uh, possibly also my shield. I'm gonna buy five of them, yeah. That is a total of uh, 4,500 gold. Uh, souls, sorry. And then I'm gonna upgrade my shield a bit. I wanna check, however, some things with my shield first, like my stability and such. We can rest at the bonfire, but it's not needed. Well, we're actually gonna talk to Sigmire, by the way, which I love. He is one of my favorite NPCs in the game. And so should be yours. Well, I know again. You need anything. Okay, so we're gonna purchase items. We're gonna buy five of these. We can upgrade our claymore to plus five. There we go. And uh, let me check right now. This has 56 stability. If I check down... No. Uh, I want to, to purchase items. If I check down here, the Caduceus and the Tower Shield, they have 58. It is a tiny little bit better. But the Spider Shield has a distinctive advantage. Which I can discuss right now. Basically, the Spider Shield blocks completely poison buildup and toxic buildup. It completely blocks it. It just blocks it. If they, they shoot poison at you, if you block with the shield, it's blocked. Whereas the Tower Kite Shield and Caduceus Kite Shield do not. So I think I'm just gonna upgrade my own shield. Two loss... Two 
stability loss, but not that much of a big deal, I reckon. That's it. Go get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm even waiting there for that dialogue, actually, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna rest and level up a tiny little bit. Uh, what are we gonna level up next? Ease. Definitely endurance to a certain point. Uh, we can level it up to 19. How about uh, this and a bit of strength, just in case you get still damage from this. Uh, scaling of its strength is usually suggested still 27. At that point you can dual wield, or rather, two hand any weapon that requires up to 40 strength. So that's most, game, uh, w most uh, weapons in the game. However, I think I'm gonna go to 30 for one very specific reason. Dexterity should be leveled up to like 20 for me in this build. Endurance uh, as much as possible and vitality the same. Probably will add up a bit of faith to till like 30 at most and attunement to 14. Probably level up attunement soon enough. Anyway, <clears throat> let's go to Sigmire and then we're gonna conclude this episode really nicely. This is by the way the entrance to Sans Fortress, but it's closed. I wonder why. We're not gonna be able to access this area quite yet, but we're gonna be able to soon enough. Sans Fortress is possibly the, my favorite area in the game. <laughs> this guy is awesome. Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge. No matter how long I wait. And oh, but I wait. So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> Still closed. Still closed. Mm. <laughs> He's waiting for basically the door to open magically. Can we check his face? Usually you can barely see. Ah, there we go. Uh, there is actually a better image in the wiki, but he is... Uh, this guy here. You can see he has actually a hairstyle, so... And also a moustache, and he is delved inside in thought. He is not hollowing up yet, he's quite human. He has a moustache though, so that's badass. He is a knight of Katarina. And if we remember correctly, our Luthier Stone Ring is from Katarina. Katarina is a, basically a country known for its knights with these onion armors, which are quite silly, but they're actually really good as an armor in the game. We're gonna actually see the statistics later on as we go on by. Alright, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go down the basement of the old church. This is the old church of the parish. Possible, possibly for another god? Possibly for a certain god that wants all bonfires dis uh, extinguished, and therefore that god sends a faithful of her to kill Firekeeper because her husband cheated on her. Maybe. Conspiracy theories, guys, conspiracy theories. So we're gonna go down the bottom of this place, we're gonna face off against a prowling demon. We're not gonna kill him. We're just gonna run past him, and we're gonna go to Darkroot. Until then, be well. Bye. This was the Loud and Gaming Show. Thanks for watching.